we went up to Atlanta this week to visit Alex as well, and um, I think that was a perfect description of where Alex is. Um, uh, Cindy, we took out to dinner with Murray's mom. We wanted her to um, know somebody in town, somebody that knows Atlanta very well. And um, she set out, when we were out to dinner, she said, this is day 51. And it kind of brought me in touch with she hasn't left really Alex's side besides taking little shots to Orlando from Ocala just to pick up some things and go back. And um, how that, this must have been 51 days must feel like years to her. And so um, she was very, very grateful just for, um, for time to, to go out to dinner and just relax and talk and um, be with nice company, me excluded, um, Murray and her mom. And uh, so, so just pray for her. The uh, infection that, uh, that we were praying for that would be taking care of the antibiotics, it appears has been taken care of so far by the antibiotics. So that's really great. I saw Alex two or three days after the accident and um, then saw him this week. And, and it, was, it was very encouraging because his, his face is exactly the same. His, it was completely Alex. Um, and the, the work that's done on his head was covered with bandages, but there's still healing that needs to be done there. And um, to see in his eyes as he was awake, he's tired, as you can imagine. Um, the brain needs to heal, so it needs re he needs rest. He needs a lot of rest, and they're working him very hard um, with therapy at least twice a day. He's in the, he's in the best place possible. Um, so he enjoyed, uh, he, he laughed at a couple old stories. He enjoyed looking at pictures, and then he enjoyed holding Murray's hand. In fact, um, that was the, probably the last 45 minutes he pretty much wanted me and Cindy to go away and, and just hold Murray's hand. So that was, he's, he's a sweet, he's a sweet guy. And um, so I appreciate all your prayers for him. And, and reaching out to um, Cindy, if you're passing through Atlanta, uh, the, she, she just loves to, to be able to visit people. Um, and she, she's, um, you know, a day is, is a week to her. Um, so any, any kind of interaction um, with Cindy is, is much appreciated because she's not leaving. She's going to be there the whole time. She's going to go all the way through. They are in a great, great part of Atlanta. I mean, it's right in Buckhead. All Murray's, Murray and I's favorite restaurants are walking distance. We took her for a walk and we were like, this place, this place, this place. You know, this is a really, really cool part of Atlanta and the, it's right next to Piedmont Hospital which is which is a world-class facility if he ever needs anything um, they would just take him next door um, for that so he's in the right place it's gonna take some time um, and you know we're praying for for full recovery and and uh, Cindy believes and the people believe there too they said they say the brain can rejuvenate it's an, it's an amazing thing um, now, can it rejuvenate all the way? All the way? That's you know what we want and, and what we're praying for. But um, God's God's gonna do some good through it, and there's just no question about that. And um, so that's good news, and some more good news is uh, hearing this week the birth of Noah Sunkol. I don't know if that's good German. Noah Sunkol. This is Stephanie and Martin's. Uh, son, Stephanie had her baby, Noah. So congratulations, Grandma. That's wonderful. That was just wonderful news. And you, you know, you can't get a better name than that. That's just the the best, you know, the best name you can give a boy, right, Clint? Nicole. I mean, you know, it's great, great name, great news. And so, it's it's good to have some good news, isn't it? So today we're starting in um, we're starting in faithfulness. It's our new fruit of the spirit we're we're moving through them and now we're on to to faithfulness and in looking at the word uh it was pretty interesting because all it is is the word faith um it's in in greek it's the word pistis and it's just faith it's there's no prefix or suffix there's nothing to say any more than in fact you could just translate it faith um 
So, you know, it's 227 times in the New Testament. We're, we're used to this word. We know this word. But basically all the translations, uh, almost all the translations, um, translate it from not just faithful, they put faithfulness. And it makes sense in the context of you've got this goodness and kindness that you would take faith and make it faithfulness. And so um, it's, and it's an interesting idea to think about. Faith is the, main, is the main subject, but let's think about this word faithfulness. Faith, which we're going to talk about, and then full, to be full of it. I want to redeem that phrase this morning, to be full of it full of faith. And it it goes along with the the fruit theme because it's an abundance. It's fullness. It's an abundance. It's when the the tree is ripe and the fruit is in abundance so much that that it's ripe and it's falling from the trees. It's, It's falling on the ground. We're picking it as soon as we can, shipping it off and enjoying ripe fruit. So it's kind of that sense, that fullness, that abundance of faith. And then ness. So you got faithfulness. And we put ness on the end of a word when we're saying it's, it's more than just a, a single happening. It's kind of a state. It's not happy. It's happiness. And so it's, it goes from just a single event to being a state. It's happiness. And so it's faithfulness. So, so when we think of faithfulness, we think of faith, the abundance of it, in such an abundance of faith that it becomes a state that we're in. So faithfulness. And we'll, we'll uh, certainly discover more about faithfulness in, in the, the weeks ahead as we walk through it. So the main, the main part and the, 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 um, the main word Really, the only word is, is faith in the Greek. And so let's, let's take a look at this because it's such a... Each, each fruit is addressed in Galatians, and we've seen that, but this one more than any other because faith is one of the main subjects of the, the book of Galatians. In fact, if you read something about a commentary on Galatians, what they're basically going to say is that this book, this letter, was written about... The, the main theme, what Paul was really trying to say, is you're justified not by works, not by the law, but by faith. And so justification by faith is what, what would, would be the explanation or the summary of what the whole book is about, the whole letter, the, the aim. And so what does that mean, justification by faith? And, and justification is, is being saved. It's being uh, it's not only it's being saved, it's being part of God's family, it's, it's being given the Holy Spirit, it's being brought into the kingdom, saved. It's, it's not just a one-time thing. It, we, I need salvation absolutely all the time. Thank you very much. Please, I need to be saved. And, and so it, it is that, and, and uh, we're, we're justified, we're brought in, we're just, uh, we're, we're made righteous, by faith alone, and it's not the result of our actions. And this is something that is, it's what grace is. is. It's a gift, and it's something that we have a very hard time as humans understanding that there would be this free gift, that, it's, that, that we don't have to do anything for it. And um, it's, it's one of the things that proves to me how uh, Christianity is truly divine, because no human would ever think of this. No human system ever has something that, oh no, you don't have to do anything for it. It just, just believe, that's all. No human would ever come up with this. So it's, it's purely from God. And so it's, that's one of the main points of Paul's letter in one of his, uh, one of the main emphasis. And so Paul was, it was a big issue too because what was happening, as you know, is the Judaizers were coming in and teaching the, the Gentile converts and, and the ones that the Jewish believers that you can't let go of this old stuff. You can't let go of the law. You've got you've to circumcise the males. You've got to do Sabbath on Sunday, just the way you used to do it. It's got to be the same. You've got to, 
You've got to, you, you have dietary restrictions. There's certain festivals you have to go to. The whole, the whole thing. They were saying you, the Gentiles, the new Gentile believers have to, have to know this stuff, have to do this stuff. And so Paul was saying, look, and, and very passionately saying that is incorrect. Don't believe that teaching. Paul was angry that they were putting this burden on the Gentile believers, this unnecessary burden. And I think Paul also was angry because it was what was happening is they were going backwards. You know, Jesus, <clears throat> Jesus has come, and therefore all the world is new, and we're new as well. And there is no going backward. There, there is walking into this new day by faith, and that's all. And this is a, you know, that's, it, it, it's not very honoring to Jesus to say, okay, Jesus has come, but we, you know, we can't forget all this old stuff. And let's not go changing too much. And this is one of the biggest struggles of Christianity. It's from the very beginning, throughout the ages of the church, to this very day, this very hour. Something has changed with Jesus. Something has changed. The, the world has changed. But then something has changed in us, and now we're enlightened to it. And there's no going back now. Uh, it's odd, but <clears throat> ever since uh, I, I encountered the shark, and the shark bit me because I bumped into the shark. It wasn't necessarily the shark's fault. And they don't have arms to go, get away from me. They only have a mouth to push you away. And so I, I, was, I was bitten. And, um, and ever since then, I have, I am, you know, partially because of, you know, I've, I've a fool to go back out there in the water, but that's what I'm going to do. I can't help it. Um, so, and it's my passion and one of the things I love to do. But I'm very aware now of movement in the water. And what it's actually done, and, and one of the positive things that's come out of it, is I see how alive the ocean is now. I see all sorts of things. I'm out in the water, even sitting on the beach. I'm like, Murray, did you see that? She's like, I didn't see anything. No one else is seeing it. The other surface, did you see that? That was a tarpon. I saw it. Did you see that shark over there? <laughs> Look at the dolphin. I see rays jumping in, in, out in the ocean, just skying. They're flying. These rays come up. Uh, my eyes somehow have been enlightened to how alive the ocean is, and this is what happens to us. All of a sudden, this grace comes in. We accept it by faith. We respond to God's grace by faith, and our eyes are open to how alive God is in the world. It's happening, and we're seeing things. And, and nobody else notices. Nobody else has eyes to see what we see. And so that's a challenge for us. That's frustrating. It's, it's really, it's, uh, to me, it's, it's Satan's joy that the world would be blind to this, to how alive God is in the world. That's what Satan wants. A couple examples, I, I remember going, we, we would go to take the youth group, and Alex was, was one, and... Um, because he couldn't talk, I, I, um, and I, can't, I couldn't read his lips. He was saying things, and I know he recognized, and he said Josh to his mom. She heard it. I, I wasn't sure. He was worried that we were leaving because he had to go to rehab, and then he, he, you know, he's like, is Josh leaving, essentially, is, is what he said. It took him a minute to recognize me. He, it was fun to see his eyes because he was like, I know this guy, I know this guy, and then this kind of smile came over, came over his face and I was showing him so I just got out my phone and I was showing him pictures of kind of what my you know what's on my phone what my family's been doing and and we were at one point we were hiking up in Georgia and I said Alex remember we were right there we used to go um, to camp right there in North Georgia and right w near this area where we were uh, that I took my family this summer and we were hiking and I was showing him the pictures I said Alex do you remember when I was driving in, in these windy roads to get up to these trails, and a bear ran across right in front of us. And um, they weren't, the guys in the back weren't laughing at the bear. They were laughing at me because I was going, bear, 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 bear. 
I was just freaking out that there was a bear right there. And so when I mentioned that story, Alex laughed. And, and Cindy was just so thrilled that, that Alex is laughing at a joke, at a memory. You know, he was, he was right there. He was, he was brought right back. And, um, th and the reason I brought that up, and I, um, not just to tell you about Alex, but what would happen is we would go up there and we would have this experience with God. On, it was a literal and spiritual mountaintop experience up there. And then there was this re-entry depression that happened. And I would try to warn them as we're coming down. You know, the, we had this wonderful experience in the, the, these wonderful counselors that are up there and, and God was just all over it. And we're going to go back down to the real world and nobody's going to care. And, and that, it's just hard. It's this re-entry depression. No one's going to care about your experience. They're, they're not going to notice. They're not going to see what you see. They're not going to feel what you feel. It's like when I, um, when I went, when I was in college, my junior year, I went to London for a semester and had this amazing experience and came back to my fraternity brothers and, and wanted to tell them the stories, and they didn't care. They had nothing... And I realized they just don't have, they didn't, most of them, maybe a couple of them say, yeah, I remember I went to Europe with my family and they had something to kind of hang that on. But most of them just kind of blank look on their face and were waiting for me to finish the story to get back to, you know, whatever was going on, you know, get back to Seminole football or, or the girls or, you know, the stuff that was within their little world. And I'm like, but I've seen this other world and I want to tell you about it. They just, just not, not interested, and this this is what happens to us, and this is the difficulty and the challenge is is we 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 live in th this situation where a majority of the world just isn't isn't interested. We we've had, we've we've been enlightened by grace, and everyone else is blind. It seems. So, as I said, Paul was really passionate about this. And this is uh, Galatians 3, 1 through 5. Listen to his passion. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you, before your very eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning with the Spirit, are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? Have you suffered so much for nothing, if it really was for nothing? Does God give you his Spirit and work miracles among you because you observe the law or because you believe what you heard? So he's saying you, you've had your eyes opened. You've seen it. You've seen the gospel, you've seen Jesus, you've had this experience, and now you're going backwards to the old stuff as if you didn't see. After beginning with the Spirit, you are now trying to attain your goal by human effort. Not relying on the Holy Spirit, not relying on this, not walking into this new world with new eyes, relying on the Holy Spirit walking by faith, but now going back to, okay, what can I do? What, what effort can I make? And this, this, is, this happens all the time to us, doesn't it? We have this experience with grace, and then we take it upon ourselves to then change. You know, and that, that happened with the kids. They would, they would, you know, come home from, I'm going to never sin anymore. You know, and I would like, now let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about this. You know that it's the spirit that changes that does the work, and this is just human nature. Again, we don't we have a grace is very foreign to us. It's not it's not um, it's not happening a lot in the world unless our eyes are enlightened to what God is doing, and so then we take it upon ourselves that we need to make something. We need to make a change, and nothing wrong with you know us trying to change the world or, or you know, I, I can get behind somebody saying, you know, let's, let's do this and great, great. 
But the, the wonderful things, the spiritual things, the grace-filled things, they're the work of God. And what happens is, uh, basically, there's two types of failures. Either we, we most of the time, we think we, we're, we experience personal failure. We, we promise that we're going to do these things. We, we intend to change, and then it doesn't happen. And so we experience shame, depression, anxiety, and we give up. And so that can happen. Or we feel that we do have some success, and then we fall into legalism. And we have pride and judgment. And we're lying to ourselves. And then we get passionate and defensive and angry. And so both of those, neither of those things are faithfulness. They're, they're both a failure. And again, it's just, it's exactly what Satan wants. Okay, you've had this experience f- of grace. Now, the best thing I can do is, is, is take grace out of the equation and make it a human effort. That's what Satan wants to do because then he knows this kind of failure is going to take place. So what can we do? How can we do faithfulness? Well, you know, we need the Holy Spirit. And how do we get the Holy Spirit? Is it, do we earn it, or is it free? You can answer this one. <laughs> it's, it's free. It's a gift. The fruit of the Spirit are gifts. In fact, the fact that faith is a fruit of the Spirit is to tell us that this faith in itself is a gift. We can't even brag about our faith or believing because it in itself was a gift. The fruit of the Spirit comes as gifts when we keep in step with the Spirit. And then you can argue, well, keeping in step with the Spirit is an is a actual work in itself, isn't it? But it's actually not. When we really realize what keeping in step with the Spirit is, it's not us trying to keep in step with the Spirit in, in our effort. It's our actually submitting to the Spirit and allowing it, standing up on the surfboard, and allowing it to push us. It's not saying, look what I'm going to do. It's saying, and, and, and I'm going to follow my plan. It's saying, look what God's going to do. And he's going to have a plan. It's, it's living by faith. And there's a lot of Christians in our, in, in, in our community, in our, in our nation, in the world. Um, but, I, and I don't mean to be judgmental, but, you know, here I am, so maybe I can be a, at this point. There's not a lot of people walking by faith. There's a lot of people who say they're Christians. There's a lot of people who say, well, I believe those things as if, as if it's some intellectual um, exercise. No, I believe that. That's what I believe. But they're not walking by faith. And Jesus would, would, Jesus would say, then you're not. Then you're not. Because it's all about every day going forward. Not that you believe this and you've checked it off and put it away. It's about walking by faith every day. It's about keeping in step with the Spirit and producing fruit. Remember when Jesus told the parable of the seed and the soil, there's only one plant that produced fruit. The others, remember the one was still alive. It was still saved. It wasn't damned, but it was choked. It was choked by the deceitfulness of wealth and the anxieties of this life. And so it was blinded. It didn't see what God was doing. And the one that wasn't choked, that was free, was able to not only grow and stay alive, it was able to produce an abundance of fruit. That's what walking by faith is. That's what God wants us to do. That's what our goal is this year, is, is to not only just believe something intellectually, it is to walk by faith and therefore keep in step with the Spirit in these gifts come in us and through us and we're blessed by them and we bless others with them and it's fruit of the Spirit. Our faithfulness is such a blessing to other people. Other people's faithfulness is such a blessing to us then we realize we're not alone. That we're not the only ones that see. There's other people that get it too. It's such, it's such a blessing. There's other people who walk by faith. And 
No one did it better than Abraham. This is Galatians 6, or um, 3, 6 through 9. Consider Abraham. He believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who believe are children of Abraham. The scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. You know, and when Abraham was in Chaldea, which is where he was originally from, which is Iraq right now, he didn't say, he heard God's voice. He didn't say, I believe that's God's voice. I believe that. And then go back, right back to his life in Chaldea, did he? What, you know, my dad brought up this idea. How many, how many people was God actually whispering to? Was Abraham just the only one that actually responded? And so he didn't just say, oh, I believe that, and then go back to his same life. No, he, he went on an adventure for the rest of his life of walking by faith, keeping in step with the Spirit. The Spirit was upon people in the Old Testament, specific people, specific times, and the Spirit was upon Abraham. And so he walked, and he had this adventure, and it was all about faith. He had to believe the whole time. The, the, the promised land wasn't given to him. This worldwide blessing, blessing hadn't taken place. The nation that was promised through him, he, he didn't even have any children yet. So here he is just walking by faith. And so when we do that, we're not alone. We're with Abraham. Or in fact, one of Abraham's children were of that family. There's a cloud of witnesses that also walked with Abraham that watch us today. And there's others there's others that God encourages us with that with their faithfulness that they bless. They bless us and they're blessed. And that's what we that's what our calling is. It's it's to walk by faith. And Paul then brings up some Old Testament passages to follow up his argument. And his best one is from Habakkuk. This is Habakkuk two four. Look at the proud. They trust in themselves and their lives are crooked, but the righteous will live by their faith. So faithfulness, faith is a gift. Fullness, being full of it, that's what we need to be. We need people to say we're full of it. Faith, that is. We're full of faith to the point that it becomes our state. Then we're faith, then we're living in faithfulness. Then we're faithful. We're keeping in step with the Spirit and accepting that gift and letting it come in abundance, and it becomes this new state of walking by faith. And so there's a little statement in your bulletin, and um, you might find it helpful during this time of looking at faithfulness. But let's go ahead and say it together. It's a good reminder for us um, on what faithfulness is in, in, our, in our desire to walk by faith. So God will make you faithful today. So say this with me. I will not try to achieve faithfulness myself. I will not to appease my guilt, shame, or pride with my own efforts to attain faithfulness. I will the abundant gift of faith. I will be full of it. I will live in the state of the fullness of God's grace. For he who gives faith to me is faithful. Dear Lord, help us uh, keep in step with the Spirit. We need your Spirit. Open our eyes to see all that you're doing. And let us not return to our own efforts, but simply trust you and believe you every day. Help us, encourage us with with uh, Abraham and our cloud of witnesses and other people of the family of faith. Um, help us be encouraged to do this, to trust you and not take, it, take things upon ourselves, but simply trust you because you are faithful. In Jesus' name, amen.